Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's review we're going to be taking a look at the newly released Dr. Wu Destroy Emperor and Monitor Officer 2 pack. These figures are essentially third party representations of Galvatron and Sound Blaster in the Micro Master scale. Now if you are in the market for picking this set up it is available and in stock right now over at Shozi store and for that of course I will leave a link down in the description box below. Taking a look here firstly at the packaging you can see that we have some amazing artwork here of Galvatron and Sound Blaster. I absolutely absolutely love the overall colour palette to this very comic book-esque in my opinion and I really do believe it pops. As we take a look here towards the side of the box we have another image there of Galvatron with the back of the box having some product images of Galvatron and Sound Blaster in their robot modes. Also included within this box is two collector's cards very similarly to the recently released and recently reviewed on the channel Dr. Wu Scalpel and Mohawk. These are very similar in terms of their design. You can see that we do get one here for Sound Blaster and one here for Galvatron and both of them do indeed have statistics with Galvatron ranking very high and Sound Blaster here ranking not so high. So without further ado, let's crack this open and see what awaits us inside. And so here we have Galvatron and Sound Blaster out of the packaging and something which struck me upon opening these figures was how tiny they actually were. I did know that these figures were going to be on the slightly smaller side in terms of scale, but I didn't expect them to be as small as they actually are. They're even smaller than some of the Micro Masters and Battle Masters that we've seen from the War for Cybertron trilogy. And I personally believe that they are going to scale really nicely with the upcoming rumoured Titan class arc. Taking a look here firstly at Galvatron, you can see that for the most part, considering this figure's scale, I think that Doctor Who have done a commendable job in capturing his appearance from the 86 movie as well as subsequent G1 seasons. You can see that the head sculpt is so crisp and precise with a metallic silver paint app used there for the faceplate and some really awesome, very menacing red eyes. We've also got some dark gunmetal highlights here for the shoulder sections and as we take a look here for the arms, I think that the proportions have come out really well as so have the details. You can see that we've got some nice red paintwork there for the torso and I think that the overall definition here to the sculpt once again has come out really well. The hip armor too has also been painted and of course we have Galvatron's massive looking orange arm cannon. I think that that too has also come out really nicely. Taking a look here down to the shins you can see some nice gunmetal highlights with some red details to pick out some of the sharper details of the sculpt. We also do have some gunmetal feet and then as we take a look here towards the back of the figure I think that for the most part he cleans up really well. We've even got this slight spike section here behind Galvatron's head which is of course accurate to his appearance. As far as articulation is concerned, we unfortunately do not get any form of head rotation. Something worth noting is that Galvatron does indeed have a swivel at the head. Unfortunately, I missed it due to it being incredibly stiff, but if you do apply a reasonable amount of force, the head can indeed rotate the full 360. Although the arms here are on ball joints, so it can rotate the full 360 as well as hinge out to the sides. Double joints here at the elbows due to the nature of the transformation, although the legs can kick forwards that far, as well as back to that far, he can also do the split. We do get a swivel here here at the lower section of the leg due to the knee actually being on a ball joint and due to the nature of the transformation this can kick well past 90 degrees. Turning here to Galvatron's transformation to begin with you are going to want to remove the arm cannon. We can then take the head here and basically just push this into this cavity. The instructions do show you utilizing this piece however for me it's very difficult to actually hinge this down so I do tend to just take the head and push this in all the way. You can see that the legs do pop off as this figure is very small. We're then going to want to take the elbows here and just collapse those in in order to create the treads for Galvatron's tank mode. We can then turn our attention here to these legs rotate these sections here out to the sides and then this tab is going to fill this hollow space so just align this up and snap that in there nice and securely rotate this section here around and of course repeat the same process bring the legs together we can just orientate this around accordingly we can then bring in Galvatron's blaster and then this here will just tab over the top. And so here we have Galvatron fully transformed up into what appears to be this almost tripod-esque looking tank mode. And once again, very similarly to the robot mode, I believe that Dr. Wu have done a commendable job in capturing his appearance from the original G1 series. You can see some nice details here, such as this entire tread region, which has been painted and sculpted really well. I do like how they've utilized the main arm cannon here and that it has become now the main turret. And something which is worth noting is that this huge blue peg here can indeed hold blast effects from the war for Cybertron so we can take any of our blast effects and simply peg that there over the top and I think that this is a really nice touch by Dr. Wu. They know many collectors pick up the War for Cybertron trilogy and they're trying to give us some cross compatibility between their own lines and of course Hasbro's. You can indeed remove this blue peg however if you wish to give him a little bit more of a coherent look and personally when displaying the figure I do actually like to do this as it doesn't create for that rather odd look when you don't have a blast effect pegged on there but certainly here for Galvatron I think that this is a really nice looking figure. Now taking 
taking a look here at Sound Blaster, this figure is arguably my favourite out of this particular set. I just believe that what they've managed to accomplish at such a tiny scale really is incredible. You can see that as far as robot mode is concerned, this is pretty much spot on to how Sound Blaster should actually look. Personally, I would have maybe liked to have seen a Sound Wave before this particular Sound Blaster, but I'm pretty sure that that figure will come in the future. You can see that the head sculpt has been done so nicely, very faithful to his original character design, and this entire torso too is very proportionately accurate with the gold highlight around the cassette deck. We also do have a metallic purple paint here for where this transparent section would be, and you can see that we do have sound blasters over the shoulder cannon, which does indeed have his signature red strip. I also do like the red strips that we get here on the forearms. We of course do have the cassette player buttons here, as well as the fast forward, rewind, and pause. And then as we take a look here down to the lower section of the figure, you can see that the shins have been picked out in a lovely silver, and we also do have gunmetal silver here for the feet. Taking a look here at the back of Sound Blaster, something which I was completely shocked to see is that this figure literally has no kibble on him whatsoever. So once again, this really is a prime example as to what Dr. Wu can do at a much smaller scale, and believe me, we will certainly get into some size comparisons later on in the review. Taking a look at Sound Blaster's articulation, he does indeed have a ball joint here at the head, which can of course look left to right and even look up and down. We do get ball joints here at the arms, which can rotate the full 360, as well as hinge out to the sides. We only get a 90 degree bend here at the elbow. However, personally, I find that to be a more than adequate range of motion. We do get a full 360 rotation here at the waist. These sections here are indeed on hinge joints, so can be moved out of the way in order to accommodate for the articulation here at the leg, which is on a ball joint, so can kick forwards that far, back to that far, as well as out to the sides. We do get a 90 degree bend here at the knee. And then finally, taking a look here at the feet, we get angle rocker pivot forwards and backwards, as well as up and down. So overall, as far as articulation is concerned, for such a tiny figure, I find this here to be very impressive. Now turning to Sound Blaster's transformation, to begin with, you're going to want to remove here the shoulder blaster and just tap that there onto the back. That will then allow you to take the head here and just tuck that down, rotate this around like so. What we can then do is bring these arms here out to the sides. You're then going to want to take these hinge joints and actually compress those until they clip and snap into their new configuration. So just compress that, tab that in there, and you can see two tabs here and here that will peg into two slots on the underside there of the arm. So just snap that in there and then snap that in there. We can then take the torso and compress this. Once again, genius engineering in my opinion for such a tiny figure. We can then take the feet here and what you'll do is bring those up and around and this tab will peg into this tiny slot on the top of the foot. So just clip that in there and of course repeat the same process here on the opposite side, so just snap that in there. And now it's just a matter of bringing this entire assembly up and this tab will peg into this slot and of course repeat the same process here on the opposite side and here we have Sound Blaster fully transformed up into what is in my opinion a very convincing cassette player alt mode. I think that they've done such a nice job on this. I would love to see what Dr. Wu would be capable of in a much larger scale if they are able to accomplish so much in such a tiny scale. You can see that as far as a cassette player is concerned this is even better than some of the Hasbro and Takara Tomy products that we have got in recent years. You can see some really nice details here at the sides and overall I think that the paintwork has come out really well even down to the attention the detail of these tiny little dials here on either side of the cassette player. So overall, both Sound Blaster and Galvatron have very convincing robot modes as well as alt modes. Turning here to a very quick size comparison, here we have both Galvatron and Sound Blaster compared next to a MicroMaster as well as the all new Kingdom Core class Optimus Prime. And you can once again see how tiny these particular figures are. And I honestly am just astonished at how much Dr. Wu have managed to accomplish in this particular scale. You can see that even when comparing them to the likes of a Micromaster, Master, they are even smaller than these particular figures and their articulation as well as the engineering in their conversions absolutely obliterate anything that we have got from Hasbro from this scale. So certainly considering their scale, I think that they are very impressive pieces. And so some final thoughts. Overall, if you are a fan of very small figures and you are fascinated like me with what Dr. Wu can do at this particular scale, then I think that Galvatron and Sound Blaster here are must adds for your collection. I also think that these particular figures are going to scale really nicely with the likes of the Titan class figures as the Titan figures are never really all that in scale and I think that Galvatron here will be a great addition for the upcoming Haslab Unicron. I really do think that the scale between this Galvatron and the Haslab Unicron will work really well and this figure here is detailed really well, painted really well and can transform and articulate. Sound Blaster is a really nice figure and out of the two is for sure my favourite. I think that his robot mode as well as the articulation and even the cassette player mode looks really well done. Of course as these figures are so small at the moment there really is 
isn't anything that can scale all that well with these. So I imagine that Doctor Wu will bring out the likes of Megatron, Optimus Prime, and all of the other Autobots and the Decepticons in the foreseeable future, depending on how well these figures do. But for now, they are definitely really nice figures. And for those of you who are not all that fussed about the scale and are actually after very small transforming figures, I think that this is probably the best bet to go with. So with all that being said, if you are in the market for picking these two figures up, they are available and in stock right now over at Shows the store and for that of course I will leave a link down in the description box below. I really hope that you enjoyed this review and until my next review I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.